Cam, before we get to your analysis and your picks, how much would you be willing to pay for a Michelob Ultra at Southern Hills? Because right now, I believe the tall boy is 16 bucks. What's going on, guys? Great to be with you. Happy PGA week. Listen, I don't drink beer. If you paid me 20 bucks, I couldn't do it. It's like liquid bread to me, Jenks. But I will say that I would pay for up to $15 on a Michelob Ultra Organic Seltzer. I'll do that. Oh, my God. <laughs> First of all, liquid bread actually sounds awesome. As someone who loves carbs and bases oh, like Christ. around carbs and gluten and fat and sugar, that sounds amazing. Liquid so bread? Bread? In college, I could not drink a beer at like a frat party. I would have to take like 10 shots before I went out and then like sipped on jungle juice, which God knows what's in that, you know? So it was tough <laughs> before I turned 21. I'd rather have jungle juice than liquid bread that Chelsea wants to drink. That is disgusting. <laughs> well, I don't think that they're serving jungle juice at the PGA Championship. And there's plenty of storylines to dive into this major. So let's get to it. Let me first ask, because this seems like a super square angle, but Scotty Scheffler is playing better golf than anybody right now. Is it a square bet to bet on Scotty Scheffler this weekend? Yeah, he's been on quite a historic run, guys. That is very a small thing to say, obviously, with, with what he's doing, winning the Masters. If he won this week, Scheffler would become the first player to win five times in a season before the end of May since Tom Watson did it back in 1980. So he is on just an unbelievable run. And I love Brandel Chambly over at Golf Channel. He was talking about this last night, how a lot of elite golfers after their breakthrough win will sort of tail off a little bit. You know, Jordan Spieth kind of tailed off after his 2015 run. You saw it from Colin Morikawa after the PGA Championship. Everybody's wondering where Brooks Kepka is right now. But Scheffler, he has this special Tiger Woods-esque trait where, you know, he's not getting fat and happy, if you will, complacent after a victory. And he's just continuing to move along. As far as the betting market is concerned, I don't see a lot of value in my opinion, guys. I'm going to bank on the Scotty Scheffler dip just a little bit this week. T23, T22, something like that. And when he finishes at that number, there's zero value whatsoever because he's like 10 to 1 or whatever in the outright market. So I'm going elsewhere this week. I'm getting off Scotty Scheffler, not an indictment on him, just really a testament to this deep, deep field that we have at the PGA Championship. Cam, one thing that Scotty Scheffler said, which is I think a lot of reasons why people are on him, and I mentioned this as well, is he says Southern Hills is his favorite course. He has experience there from when he went to Texas playing in the Big 12. So how much of that, you can't really quantify it, but how much of that is a factor whenever you place a bet, whether it's the PGA or another tournament, when you have a golfer who is familiar and really enjoys the course on which he's playing? Yeah, you certainly have to take it into account. Now, I will say this course is different from just honestly three years ago. Gil Hans put a renovation on this golf course. It's a lot different. The fairways are wider now. These greens are really tricky. And by that, I mean they have these random runoffs. So even if you hit the green, you could get a bad bounce and it goes off the green. And then you have to bring in your wedge game and save yourself with your scrambling here. So for Scotty Scheffler, even he had to do a little bit of learning this week with this renovation here at Southern Hills. A lot, lot different from the 2007 version that we saw when Tiger Woods won here at the PGA Championship. So he too had to learn a little bit earlier this week as far as the course is concerned. But certainly you can take it into account. Jordan Spieth, Justin Thomas were here a couple of weeks ago, uh, taking in the golf course, learning things, and obviously learning more earlier this week. So they should be in good position to perform well this week at the PGA Championship as well. Cam, it's a really deep tournament with some of the hottest golfers on the face of planet Earth right now. They're playing great golf, but there's somebody listening to this show right now that's thinking, why aren't they talking about Tiger? And he is such a big presence at any tournament that I know there are plenty of other golfers who are probably playing better golf right now, but we've got to ask, what do we expect from Tiger Woods this week? Yeah, we have to talk about him, right? Of course. And he is the needle of the game. Here's the situation. I am taking off my fan hat, putting on my analyst hat. I am not confident in his chances here this week at the PGA Championship. A few reasons why. Number one, this golf course, Southern Hills. Okay, this is not flat. This is going to be a big time test. 
in terms of his right knee, I know it's stronger than five weeks ago at the Masters, but this is a long golf course, very long for a par 70, over 7,500 yards. Finished 47th at Augusta National, made the cut. But here's the deal, guys. The Masters field is very small. It's like 90 guys. 20 of them are past champions and first timers. So they're going to miss the cut most likely. So it's really easy to make the weekend at Augusta. This is a full field event. 156 players in all, really talented players. And then you throw in the fact that this golf course is a lot different than 2007. So Tiger has to change his strategy this week. If I'm putting any finances whatsoever on Tiger Woods, it's for him to miss a cut. And that's at plus 100 over at BetMGM. Anything else, I can't do it. I'm rooting for the guy. My heart is obviously in for him to win this week. I want him to win. But you just got to look at the data. And we don't have a lot of it, so you can't really prognosticate too well about what we are to expect from him this week. But it, again, it's a testament to the depth of this field. I mean, you're competing against the likes of Rory McIlroy and Jason Day and Justin Thomas, Xander Shoffley, Hideki Matsuyama. All these guys are playing elite golf right now. So for Tiger Woods, it is an uphill climb. Put that all together. I don't like his chances to make the weekend. It kills me to say that, but that's my analyst hat speaking right now. We're chatting with Cam Rogers of the Roman Guest Line, golf and betting analyst on the Believe Podcast Network. Also, give him a follow on Twitter at Mr. Rogers99. Jordan Spieth is a guy who finished second last week at the ATT Byron Nelson. The PGA is the only trophy he does not have. He needs this to capture the career slam. How do you assess his chances this week? I like his chances a lot. He is yeah. riding some serious momentum, Jinx. Absolutely. Nearly won last Sunday at the Byron Nelson for a back-to-back -back victory. He won a few weeks ago at the RBC Heritage. And what's really interesting is that Jordan Spieth has been elite with his ball striking, and the putter has been a little bit wonky right now. Usually it's the opposite. The ball striking is just eh, but he saves himself with that magical short game. Last week, the putter finally came around for him. So I think that's going to carry over this week at Southern Hills. Like I mentioned, he did some scouting not too long ago with Justin Thomas on this golf course. He's 18th in this field in strokes gained. T to green over the last 24 rounds. He should thrive around these greens as well. I am predicting some really gnarly conditions this week in terms of the wind. And that means everybody's going to miss greens. And that means this is going to be a big scramble fest. In a scramble fest, I like a grinder like Jordan Spieth here this week. Really like his chances. He's inside my top five in terms of my power rankings. I like him for a top 10 this week over at BetMGM. You can get him at plus 190. So, But in terms of the outright market, we'll not talk you out of it either. So open-ended, what are some of the bets you like this weekend? Yeah, I'm all in on Hideki Matsuyama this week for a top 10 plus 250 over at BetMGM. There were some injury concerns earlier this year, but listen, he was absolutely exquisite at the AT&T by Renelson last week. 9.4 strokes gained on approach alone. So the ball striking is fantastic. His putter has been pretty solid as well. Like him for a top 10. My projected winner, Rory McIlroy. He will hoist the Wanamaker Trophy on Sunday evening, his fifth major championship. He's third in this field in strokes gained total over the last 24 rounds. Sixth in strokes gained off the tee, coming off a top five finish outside our doorstep, Jenks at the Wells Fargo Championship. Yeah. Very difficult TPC Potomac, by the way. So, you know, Rory thrives in those difficult conditions. Two-time PGA champion at Kiowa and Valhalla, 2012 and 2014. So I like him in the outright market. Kind of a chalky play, but that's what you get sometimes at the PGA Championship. And then I'll give you guys a sleeper as well. I like Matt Kuchar for top 20. Four to one over at BetMGM. He was second at Valero, third at the RBC Heritage, 12th last week, around the green magician. And if this becomes a scramble fest, he should perform well. Three top tens the last seven years at the PGA Championship. He is golf and betting analyst on the Believe Podcast Network and host of the Lock It In Podcast. It is Cam Rogers on the Roman Guest Line. Cam, always great to see a great analysis and good luck on your bets this week. Thank you, guys. Take care.